over the last seventy years. <laughs> is a uh, title of Colonization and Polish, a blueprint for Freedom's Journal. And this paper received the third place faculty paper award from the History Review Journal. Thank you, sir. And uh, that is because I have such good students in the class, <laughs> such very good students. Uh, so, so I appreciate the students and their very good work. What do I do? Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to do this real fast. <laughs> it's history. You're not that concerned with history, are you? Uh, I had the greatest the difficulty cutting this paper down to uh, presentation and how how many twelve minutes. Uh, at the conference, and now eight minutes. <laughs> so I'll start at the end. The end. This is the first African American newspaper, Freedom's Journal. Now, when you think of it's faster than I am. When you think of Freedom's Journal, uh, oh, when you think of African Americans in the 1800s, you probably you might think slavery, and you might think that's what the history of African Americans were at that time. But there was. Uh, there was activity among African Americans, and most most of it tends to most of the history sort of suggests it starts here with Freedom's Journal. Well, what what I am doing in this research is I'm looking at Freedom's Journal as part of a bigger history that is that has not yet been effectively told. Some of the uh, major histories, uh, the history books that we use for our students, kind of suggest that the first African-American newspaper, Freedom's Journal, really uh, kind of <laughs> sort of started because uh, a few uh, African-Americans met in a room in somebody's house in New York City one day, and they were upset with, with, the, with newspaper representation of African-Americans. And the newspapers would not give these African, I don't know why this thing is fine, would not give these African Americans an opportunity to respond to kind of negative stories about them, and they started their own newspaper. Where well, there's more to the history than that. I'm just going to let it fly. There's more to the history than that. The history is uh, that I'm finding is the, the newspaper was founded because of an effort that was underway, a movement that was underway to essentially send African Americans back to Africa, called the colonization movement, started in 1816. But what I show in this paper is that before the colonization movement, what you're seeing on the screen now is uh, the publication of sermons and orations and uh, memorials which are requests to the government to do something by African Americans. And so I make the argument that there was this notion of a civil rights movement even as early as the 1800s. Uh, and so when the colonization movement started in 1816, African Americans were already active. Interestingly enough though, African Americans, some of the leaders at the time, when the colonization movement was started, agreed with this notion of colonization. But they, uh, their agreement wasn't so much to send African Americans, called black <coughs> people of color at that time, back to Africa. Many said, we were born here. We, we can't go back to a place we've never been. So we preferred some location here in the United States, if anything. But that sentiment was among a few, but not very many. So here's the connection I tried to make. The connection is that the senior editor of this black newspaper when it was first found, Samuel Cornish, was moved to Philadelphia about the time that he was 20 years old from Delaware. And when he moved there, this, there was an active, vibrant, middle-class African-American community that he became a part of. And there were those in that community, including the person who would become his mentor to, as he was studying to become a minister in the 
Presbyterian Church, the white Presbyterian Church. And that mentor was the first African American uh, minister in the Presbyterian Church, and Cornish ultimately became the second. But in this, in this community, when the colonization movement was started, this colonization movement here was started, there was an immediate reaction on the part of African Americans in Philadelphia, which is where Cornish was. And they roundly rejected this notion of colonization. And so, on the one hand, Cornish is at a formative period in his life when the church that he is trying to become a member of accepts colonization. But this community that he becomes a part of it, for the most part, vehemently rejects colonization. And in this resolution adopted by an audience of 3,000, 3,000 African Americans at a church, they sent the message loud and clear they did not support colonization. Now what I show following this is two more meetings of African Americans. That was in, a, in January of 1817. The next one is August of 1817. And then there's one in 1819. And I make the argument that in reading the resolutions from those meetings, these terms you see in red here, home, brotherhood, distrust, uh, one, justice, equality, and uplift become the foundation of what ultimately is the kind of uh, what African Americans use as their themes that ultimately become the civil rights movement. They also become the themes that we see in the first editorial of the first African American newspaper, Freedom's Journal. And so there's the connection there that I'm making between Cornish in Philadelphia at this time, and then 10 years later becoming the editor, senior editor of the journal, of Freedom's Journal. One more thing about that is, Cornish and the junior editor, John Rusworn, actually had a big split over this issue of colonization. Cornish resigned from the newspaper, leaving it in the hands of this junior editor. The junior editor, a few months later, quits the newspaper, folds. That editor, John Rusworn, joins the American colonization movement and goes to Liberia the country in Africa that it started and be ultimately becomes a governor of one of the colonies. A few months after that, Cornish then comes back and starts the second African American newspaper. So kind of, so the significance of all of this is, is putting Cornish in the context of, of uh, the anti-colonization movement among African Americans and to see that in connection with what ultimately becomes the uh, what we call the long freedom struggle, or more familiar with us, the civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s.